241 steps. 36. 37. 38. Ugh. Too much chuleta. Bacalao. Yes, I'm all cheese. Just don't have cider. Buenos dias, Egun on. Good morning. Como estamos? How's everybody doing? We're doing great. Where are we? We're in Mundaka, basically the heart of surfing in the Basque Country, right here in the Urubai Estuary, that nature reserve that we started this whole series at. It's been a fun day. Mundaka is one of the best waves in Europe. It's a left point break, but unfortunately, there are no waves. It's completely flat today. So instead of hopping on surfboards, we're gonna make the best of the situation and go grab some stand-up paddle boards. We're gonna meet up with Craig Sage, who owns a surf shop in town. He's one of the uh, Australians who brought surfing here a couple decades ago. So let's go do it. Let's go. When you start surfing and you become obsessed with surfing, you get the stoke, and the stoke, the surf stoke, tends to dominate your life. All you think about is surfing, thinking about the next board you're gonna buy, and then once the board collection starts, it can get, it can get kind of dangerous. I mean, check this out. Craig, how many boards do you have in here, man? From a 9682 down to a 74, 7 footers. Uh, apart from this, I've got another seven boards in the garage downstairs. The beauty of Mundaka is that it is a point break that also has a super heavy barrel. Bro. That was a grower. That started out about three to four foot and just started growing really? like the- A grower? Just, yeah, a grower. so amazing you guys like this is the most beautiful river estuary I've ever been to home to an incredible wave down low mellow little village this place has got to be one of the top places in the Basque country I love it it's also a UNESCO bio reserve. it's important because there's a migrating bird to stay here Some little waves coming in it's by no means real Mundaka but Now, to Guernica. All right, guys. Well, always a fan of starting the morning with a bit of salt water, but now we're changing gears. We are back in Guernica. So in episode one, we came here to show you guys how this was really a symbol of Basque democracy, the tree of Guernica. Most foreigners probably recognize the city from uh, the Pablo Picasso painting, which a lot of us pronounce Guernica, which is basically about the city's destruction during the Spanish Civil War. So we're gonna go meet up with Paul Rios, who is a peace activist, and learn more about that fateful day. Kaisho, Marco. Kaisho. A 
lot of foreigners don't really understand what the Spanish Civil War was about. And a lot of that's because uh, it was overshadowed by the First and Second World War. It happened right in the middle in the 1930s, and the world was distracted by the rise of fascism in Italy with Mussolini and Germany with Hitler. Basically in Spain, Francisco Franco was a Spanish general. He was a fascist, took over the government in a coup, and it plunged the country into a bloody civil war that pitted brothers against brothers. Monday morning, the 27th of April, 1937, a number of German and Italian bombers came through the town of Guernica, targeted a civilian population for the first time uh, on this scale, and destroyed all of the town. The only thing that really survived the attack was this building, the parliament building, and the tree of Guernica, the symbol of Basque democracy. So we're here with Paul Rios, and he's just going to tell us a bit more context about not just the Civil War and the bombing, but the pain that followed. I am a peace uh, activist uh, here in the Basque country. During the Franco dictatorship, we also lost uh, our self-government uh, and also the right, for example, to, to speak uh, Basque and, and to express our culture publicly. So it was a very hard moment for the Basque people. And during that time, well, there was a reaction against the Franco dictatorship made by the armed organization called ETA that started a campaign of terrorist attacks. It was the trainer of a basketball team, one father of these uh, players uh, was killed uh, by ETA. I decided to start working for peace and especially to create places for dialogue and for agreement uh, inside the, the Basque country. So I think that the most important thing is to engage with Basque people. I know that it's very difficult because we are quite close, you know, but uh, at the same time we are ready to, to talk about uh, our history, our, our culture, our identity. Thank you for everything. Skidigasko. Agur. This painting is intense. Obviously it's abstract art, so there's a lot going on, but it's pretty easy to see what the message is. You know, there's dismemberment, there's death, there's fear. When you look at the details of the painting, you can see that it's something that's kind of timeless. You can't really tell the story of the Basque Country without talking about the bombings at Guernica. And all the pain that followed. Yeah. I mean, I think that's why we came here in the first episode, but we decided to talk about this later after we'd given some context to what the Basque culture is, because mm. Alex and I came here as teachers shortly after the peace uh, had arrived in the Basque Country. I don't think we'll ever understand what everyone went through on both sides of the conflict, but I've been very encouraged by seeing the younger generation who speaks Spanish, French, English, and also, of course, Basque. So we're going to switch gears again, and we're taking a uh, Tonight we're going to be staying in Bilbao, we're taking the long road to get there. So we're going to go around the peninsula, past one of the most beautiful places on all the Basque Coast. Stay tuned. Sube, sube. Wasen. That's the viewpoint, and then this is where we're going. And that is two kilometers down and two kilometers back up. What's it called? San Juan de Gastelugache. <laughs> I think it's Gastelugache. <laughs> Say that five times. Gastelugache. 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 Wow. Quickly realizing that this is no small undertaking. It's like it's like a fat hike. I think that's why they did it. They built it so that it was hard to get to. Apparently, it was a target for Sir Francis Drake, who raided it when he had his war against the Spanish. Get there. Tradition says that you ring the bell on the little chapel three times, and once you do that, supposedly your wish is granted. There's been a shipwreck. We don't know where it's gone. Why are you speaking like a Scotsman? Probably because it's my preferred accent of choice. 241 steps. 36. 37. 38.
God, guys, look at where we are. Alright, so supposedly the legend is if you get up here, you gotta ring the bell three times and your wish comes true. Alright, let's go ring the bell. <laughs> Alright, ready? Let's go. Alright, guys, if you enjoyed that video, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe to Vaga Brothers for new travel videos twice every week. Stay tuned, tomorrow we head to Bilbao. In the meantime, stay curious, keep exploring, and we'll see you guys on the road. Agur. We open our eyes to a sunbeam.